Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. Thank you to Jerry and R.A. for actually supporting the show on a recurring basis there. And I also want to thank Chris for becoming our latest Patreon supporter at the Master Detective level of $15 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of The Man Called X. The original air date, June the 8th, 1951, and the title is Grain Black Market in India. Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. The Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by... By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. India, long a land of mystery and enchantment, one-time center of oriental splendor, is still upon occasion a place of violence and danger. And especially is this true when man's great enemy, hunger, walks the streets. For hunger breeds death. Night has fallen over Bombay Harbor, and the only footsteps heard on the mole are those of watchmen and police, and a few beggars too hungry to sleep. Watchman? Watchman? Uh, now, where the devil can he be? Hmm? What's this? He's been killed. Stabbed to death. Another one. I wonder if they took the grain in the warehouse. 200 tons of wheat. For... Uh, never mind the flashlight, Inspector Dimi. The warehouse is empty. Roger the color. What are you doing here? A very good question, Inspector. One which might apply to you as well. Why, I... I belong here. It's my duty to protect the harbor warehouses. What's more, it's no affair of yours. Hunger is the affair of every human being in Bombay. People are starving by hundreds, by thousands. Ah, but no Raja has starved. Remarkable how one never sees a hungry Raja. Is that not so? Hunger is relative, Inspector. And even more remarkable is your singular habit of always arriving just after a robbery. Well, it is impossible for one to be everywhere. How can I know where... What? Why should I offer you explanations, Roger Dakala? I have work to do. It's pretty much the same story all over India, Chief. But the worst part of all is the Bombay district. Yeah, it seems to be, Ken, judging from these reports. Dozens of warehouses in the harbor area have been robbed during the past few weeks. Black market is running wide open, offering grain and other food at 10 to 20 times what it's worth. Mm. People are starving and the food committee is helpless. That could lead to a bad situation, couldn't it? It's leading to it right now, Chief. When people get hungry, oh, well, you know, anything can happen. And frequently has. All right, if you're trying to convince me it's our job to stop it, I agree. 
So, where do we go from here? Bombay. Or at least that's where I'm going. Yeah, but what I mean, Ken... I know Chief Lee Jangle's ideas. Well, I I don't have any. What about the Bombay police? I should find out their theaters when I get there. Well... All right, go to it. One good thing, at least. I haven't seen Zell Schmidt around lately. This is one time you won't have him in your hair. <laughs> Don't be too short of that. Hmm? I just talked to Miss Brooks. She says Pig on something last week when I was down in Mexico City. He wanted to know if the Bureau had been getting any information from India. But what for? Why the devil would he be interested in India? Chief, Pig on an old hand at black markets. There's one operating anywhere in the world. You've heard about it. <laughs> can see, Mr. Thurston, the harbor front circles off to our right for more than a mile. An immense jungle of piers, wharves, storage yards, and warehouses. It is a tremendous problem to guard it properly. And guarding it is your responsibility. Is that right, Inspector Remy? Yes. Perhaps too much of a responsibility, judging by recent events. Oh, it's a busy area, all right. Congested, crowded. Exactly. Without such conditions, the robberies would not have been possible. So, shall we go back to my office? Fine. You need more police, Inspector Remy? India needs more of everything, Mr. Thurston. Food, money, and police. It makes it worse that food is being lost. Any idea who's back of this black market and relief grain? The same. You would call it a gang that steals it, I believe. Gang? Mm. Here we are. After you, sir. Thank you. It is only my surmise, of course, that a single gang is responsible, but they use the same technique each time. Make a quick, brutal attack, usually at night, and haul the grain away on trucks. Have there been any arrests? A few peddlers have been questioned, no results. If they know anything, they're afraid to tell it. Oh, well. Maybe the best plan, then, is to start at the top. At the top? Look, Inspector, suppose a, a big-time operator arrived in Bombay and wanted to break into the black market. Wanted to buy some stolen grain. Now... What's the first thing he would do? Yes, I think I understand, Mr. Thurston. If such a man were unknown in Bombay, he might go to the Cosmo Club. The Cosmo Club, eh? And he might permit himself to be uh, overheard talking about his plan. What kind of a place is it? An underworld front? Not so far as we know, but it is sort of a crossroads for notorious international personalities. I see. If nothing else, Mr. Thurston... A chance to meet the uh, hostess of the club would justify your visit. Uh-huh. Her name is Karma. Beautiful, mysterious, and... Uh... <laughs> uh, but go see for yourself. Thanks, I will. By the way, Inspector, do you happen to know whether a man named uh, Pagon Zellschmidt has arrived in Bombay during the last week? Zellschmidt? No, Mr. Thurston, the name is totally unfamiliar. A friend, perhaps? Well, he's beginning to worry me. That's all this run of luck can't last forever. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Well, you couldn't be anyone but Karma. Why, yes. How did you know? Oh, I've heard about you. Beautiful, mysterious. Thank you. Um, my name is Ken Thurston. Welcome to the Cosmo Club, Mr. Thurston. Your first visit? Yes, I'm here on business, in a way. I was told that this might be a good place to arrange for the purchase of some grain. How odd. This is not exactly a market or a warehouse. Well, I understand there's more grain outside the warehouses than inside. It's the outside kind that I'm interested in. A hundred pounds to start with. I'll pay top prices. Mr. Thurston, it's possible, of course, that someone here in the club has what you're looking for. I would not know. I serve excellent food, generous drinks, and I keep silent. That is my rule for staying in business. In Bombay, at least. Well, it's a good rule anywhere. My problem's different, though. I'm trying to go into business, not uh, stay in. I wish you the best of luck. Wait up. If you'll excuse me now, the waiter will take care of you. 
Thanks. Uh, just step this way now, my oh, good... Oh, there you are. Mr. Thurston. No, I knew it was too good to last. Oh, you should talk, Mr. X. You come all the way to India just to loss up my game again. What game? <laughs> the black market? Sure, as soon as I found out who is the big wheel behind... Oh, what am I saying? Nothing I couldn't have guessed. <laughs> but I, I was only joking, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> oh, sure. Now, come on, how about a table? I'll give you the best one in the house. Now, come on, follow me. What uh, have you found out about the black market, Pagan? Oh, you could put it in your head, I don't know. Know anybody who's mixed up in it? I got suspicion of one guy. Here you are, sir. Thank you. He's sitting at the second table from you, uh, the one next to the window. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a big shot around town, the Raja Dakala, or something like that. That's so. Yeah, uh, he's always snooping around asking questions like you are. Probably trying to get started in the black market. Like I am. Sure, that's exactly what... What? Uh, waiter, you know where I can buy a hundred tons of hot grain? But, 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 but... That's a great answer. But, but, but Mr. Thurston, the dog should ever live to see the day. Well, now that you have, suppose you bring me a scotch and soda. Sure, coming right up. By the beard of my father, Mr. Thurston has finally turned crooked. Pardon me for barging in. My name's Blake Kramer. I'm Ken Thurston. Sit down, Mr. Crane. No, thanks. I'm on my way out. Where would you be planning to sell that grain, Mr. Thurston? Not uh, locally, if that's what you mean. Know where I can get it? It might be arranged. Where are you staying? Alexander Hotel. Fine. I'll get in touch with you. Good night. So long, Mr. Kramer. Ah. Uh, there's a phone call for you, Mr. Thurston. I'll plug it in here by the table. Here you go. Did you anything about that man who just left, the one who was sitting with the Raja? Blake Kramer? Only that he charges everything here and never leaves a tip. Wait. Uh, here's your call. Thanks. Ken Thurston. Inspector Ramey, Mr. Thurston. What's up, Inspector? Another robbery. They just cleaned out the grain warehouse at Pier 39. I'm over here now. Pier 39? All right, Inspector. I'll be there in ten minutes. <laughs> so it was, Mr. Thurston. Uh, did you... So long, Pedro. No. Wait. They used the same technique again, Mr. Thurston. A gang of 15 or 20 men and half a dozen trucks. They cut the telephone wires there at the end of the block, then they slugged the watchman and two police guards, took 30 tons of wheat from the warehouse... And uh, no witnesses, Inspector? To all intents and purposes, no. Well, what do you mean? Some of those beggars there under the lights undoubtedly saw the gang leave, but they regard the whole thing as just a piece of good fortune. Good fortune? What are they doing here, anyhow? A sack of wheat fell off one of the escaping trucks. Most of it is gone, of course, but they are sifting the dirt for any grains that may be left. Oh, poor devils. Mm. Inspector, do you know anything about a man named... Uh... Blake Kramer. Blake Kramer? No, I've never heard of him. Who is he? He's my one contact so far with the black market boys. Beyond that, I don't know. Well, there's a call box there by the warehouse. I'll check the name of my office. Thanks. Are you here? Over here, Pagan. Boy, what a sucker I am. Leaving a soft job at the club and running around the foggy docks. There's only one reason you'd do it, for a buck. Oh, Mr. Now, Thurston. what about Blake Kramer? Well, I followed him out of the club, like you said, and, and, and he got in a taxi and told the driver to take him to the Burda. Oh, the Burda? Yeah. It's a slum district over south of the harbor place. Good, good. Now at least you know the general area Mr. where... Mr. Thurston! Yes, Inspector? The office has a report on Blake Kramer, all right. A recent one, in fact. Oh, what do you mean? Ten minutes ago in the Burda district, knifed to death. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It is a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. 
thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You will like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you will be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist's. And now to continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. A wave of robbery and terror has swept the harbor district of Bombay, and while people starve in the streets, the stolen grain is sold openly on the black market. The police are helpless, and now Ken Thurston's only contact, a black market operator named Blake Kramer, has just been wiped out by murder. There's something slightly out of focus, Inspector Remy. That murder shouldn't have happened. The murder was probably committed by the black market gang, and yet Kramer was a member of the gang. That's right. Doesn't make sense. Unless... Yes, Mr. Thurston? There's one explanation, of course, but that eliminates... Could be. Inspector, will you call your office? Ask them to trace back on Kramer? Find out when he arrived in Bombay and so on? Yes, I'll be glad to, Mr. Thurston. What do you think, Mr. X? Who's behind it? I don't know, Pagan. Maybe we're about to find out now. What do you mean? How will we... Oh... Permit me to introduce myself, Mr. Thurston. I am the Roger Dakala. You do? Another warehouse robbery. Looks like it, doesn't it? Ah, yes. And more grain gone to the street with no women. Street with no women? Perhaps Mr. Kramer could take the time to explain it to you. I doubt it, Roger. Reed is going to be busy attending a funeral. A funeral? I don't... His own. He was murdered tonight. Ah, but they pity. The... Kramer was a friend of yours? No. Merely the sort of acquaintance one meets in a public club. Ah, but Inspector Rini is returning. It is best, perhaps, that I leave now. Is he another acquaintance, Roger? Do not trust the Inspector, Mr. X. Well, good night. Mr. Thurston, he knows who you are. It looks like it. Well... What did Roger DeCala want, Mr. Thurston? Oh, he stopped by to give me a little advice. So? Do not trust him. More advice. Inspector, what I need is information. I do not have it to give, Mr. Thurston. Then maybe I'd better dig up a little. Come on, Pete, on this go. Now, let me get it straight, Mr. Thurston. I'm supposed to find this hack driver who took that Kramer character out to the bird at this evening, right? That's right, Pago. And then what? Hang on to him until I come back out of the club. Now, go to it. I'll only be a few minutes. Well, good evening, Mr. Thurston. You are going to become a regular customer if you are not careful. Yes, I might as well arrange for a monthly charge account. Sorry. It's the same rule for everyone. Cash on the line. Part of your system for staying in business in Bombay? It works. I'm still in business. Would you like a table, Mr. Thurston? Uh, no, thanks, Tom. I'm only here for information this time. Oh? Information in general or about something in particular? Both. Anything in general about three particular men. The Roger Takala, Blake Kramer, and Inspector Rini. Well, Inspector Rini has never been to the club as far as I know. The other two are occasional customers. That is all I know about them. I see. Part of the system again. Hear nothing, say nothing. That's quite right, Mr. X. Well, the last bit of information I needed. Surely you were aware of your own identity. I'm not aware that everybody knew it. Everybody but Blake Kramer, that is. It's too bad he didn't. Because that's why he's dead. <laughs> I don't get it, Mr. Thurston. As far as I'm concerned, this is nothing but a wild goose. Uh, what are we going to do down here in this birder place? 
look for a street with no women, Pega. Hmm. What's the point of that? I'd rather go back to the Cosmo Club and pitch wood karma. Now, there is a point. And how come this ten-pound sack of wheat you got there? What are we going to do, plant it? In a way. Is this the pace driver? Yes, sir. The man named Kramer left my vehicle here and walked south. Boy, those alleys are dark, Mr. Thurston. Dangerous, too, I bet. Well, they were for Kramer. His body was found about a hundred yards from here. Come on, let's get out. Just stretch our legs a little, huh? Yeah, they might call it that. Huh? Here you are, driver. Thank you, sir. May good fortune judge your path. Thank you. Stay gone. Just uh, hand me that sack of grain. Sure. Here you are. Are we going to plant right here in the road? Not exactly. All right, driver. Good night. Hey, Mr. Fresh. Hey, he's driving away. I know. Come on. Come on what? Stop him. He's going off and leaving us. And let's start walking. Down those dark alleys? Well, you can stay here and wait for me if you like. Well, that's more like a... Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not going to stay here. Well, here I am again. No choice. How much farther, Mr. Thurston? I've got cold shivers in my back waiting to get stabbed any minute. You don't need that. My feet hurt. Well, you came to India to be a big operator on the black market, didn't you? Who's operating it? And why do we have to walk down four dozen alleys to, to do it? Anyhow, I don't think he's, even you turned crooked, Mr. Bates. Don't be too sure, Pagan. I'm carrying a ten-pound sack of black market grain. Yeah, but you got an angle of some kind, yeah. Oh, I wish we'd hurry up and, and find that street without any women. Oh, we've already found that. This is it. Huh? Haven't you noticed in the doorways of these huts? Everywhere else is the bird of women and children, but not here. But maybe they've gone to bed or, or something. They hadn't any other alleys. Oh, sure. Hi, well, oh, why oh, this guy's Mr. Fish. The men who live on the street with no women. Yes, but, 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 but. Keep walking, sir. Straight ahead. He's got a gun. Then we better do as he says. Come on. Excellent advice, Mr. Rex. No sudden moves, if you please. We'll enter the last hut on the left. All right, fine. Who, who, who are these guys, Mr. Fashion? Grain robbers, hijackers, black market boys. They, they live here? No, no, no. The huts are used to store the grain. What's in that last hut? Probably the head of the black market. The head? Who is it? Good question, Pega. Who do you think? <laughs> gun, please. Thank you. Both of you will enter. I wait here outside. No, I'm paying up. Mr. Thurston, if I get out of this alive, so help me, I'll... I'll... Good evening, gentlemen. How are you, Karma? You seem to have walked into a little trap, Mr. F. Trap? Mr. Thurston, that Roger is in with her. He's the one who, who mentioned the street without women. But it's a lie. Uh, she, I mean, uh, her. No, 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 Pagan. I think the Roger is trying to stop the black market. He's been handicapped, though, because Remy doesn't trust him. You mean the inspector's not in with, with her either? No. Just Blake Kramer. While he was alive. Quite true, Mr. Thurston. I had to eliminate Blake because he tipped himself off to you before I could warn him who you were. Yeah, I kind of thought it might be that way. It's too bad you didn't think it sooner. Before you came here alone. Oh, I did. Remember your no-credit rule? Why well, didn't apply to Kramer? <gasps> That's right. He was charging all the drinks. Say. And yet you came here anyway. Why? To stop these grain robberies. Stop the black market. Stop you. It's a high ambition for an unarmed man surrounded by 30 of my boys. Maybe. And did you plan to carry the grain away with you, Mr. Thurston? Is that the reason for the empty sack? Empty? Uh, what do you mean, empty? Why, no, why no, no, she's right, Pig. On the sack is empty. Karma, you're under arrest. Oh, come now, Mr. Thurston. After all, I am... Mister, 
people have come. Thousands of them, they fill the street. What do you think? They have found the grain in the huts. They come this way. Our men are fleeing. They can't. Not them, do you hear me? No use, missy. Thousands of people. I go now. Maybe get away. Karma, you're under arrest. You did it. You did it somehow. Yes, that empty sack had a small hole in it. So it left a trail of grain all over the border. A thin trail, of course, but for starving people it was plenty. Well, Karma, they're outside on the street, all the people you robbed and starved. You'd like to take your chances with them? Or come along with me? They would kill me. I would not have a chance. You know I would not. They're breaking into the house, Mr. Burton. They're taking the grain. Hey, look. They're tearing those shots to pieces. So why not? The grain belongs to them. Yes, you're right, Karma. You wouldn't have a chance. No. You didn't have a chance from the start. From the moment you set out to profit from starvation and misery and death. Good name, the street with no women. Because you're no woman. You're... Oh, come on, Miss Our star, Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Out on the beach, ready for fun. Then suddenly your portable radio grows weak. Don't let it happen to you. Install fresh new RCA Victor batteries, radio engineered for extra listening hours. Your portable radio is ready for top performance and long-lasting power when you install leak-resistant, climate-proof RCA radio batteries. Radio engineered for extra listening hours. Sturdy, dependable RCA batteries will deliver a powerful portable radio signal under the toughest service condition. See your RCA radio dealer or serviceman for a complete portable radio inspection now. If your portable needs new power, insist on RCA radio batteries for extra listening hours. Attention, electronic engineers. Right now, RCA has career openings for experienced engineers. If you're a qualified radio electronics engineer, RCA offers you lifelong opportunities. Just send a complete resume of your education and experience to Radio Corporation of America, Box 1, RCA Building, Radio City, New York. Your resume will be kept confidential. Here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I do want to express my gratitude to two of my good friends, Van Heften and John Lund, who did such a lovely job while I was away. My thanks, too, to those in tonight's cast, Will Wright, Gene Tatum, Bob Griffin, Lou Merrill, and Dan O'Hurley. Next week, the deep, impenetrable jungles of the Amazon River, where Ken tangles with one of the most subtle threats to peace in the world today. Not so subtle, of course, will be Leon Velasco's Pagan Zoschmidt. So join us, won't you, where next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, always milder, better-tasting, cooler smoking. Plus, no unpleasant aftertaste, and that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as a Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in The Life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC. Oh.
Welcome back. Uh, am I the only one who found it somewhat on the nose that the guilty party was named Karma and that she got what was coming to her in the end? And yes, I know that's not the full explanation of it, but, you know, in a sort of tough layman's understanding, I wonder if that was something they were going for as a bit of a play on words. Now, I, I think that from a practical level, you could be a little bit skeptical about how the man called X got out of this. Streets in India are often very crowded, so uh, leaving a trail of grain and expecting somebody to follow it is a huge gamble. But I think that it was meant in a way, like in a dramatic way, to illustrate just how uh, much suffering there was going on in India and the level of suffering being caused by these black marketeers. In a way, the story calls to mind the CBS episodes of The Man Called X, where the episodes weren't about the Cold War, but about Man Called X having to deal with greed and general corruption, undermining the well-earned peace, and bringing untold human misery. And you can hear some of those same themes in today's episode. Well, now I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Joel, Patreon supporter since July of 2021, currently supporting the show at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for the support, Joel. And that will do it for today. A reminder, coming up in one week, I will be doing my first talk on Wisdom, the Wisdom app, and it's going to be a live audio chat. So uh, you can uh, actually chat with me and we'll have a conversation. Just go to wisdom.greatdetectives.net, follow my profile, and then join us on December the 8th, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, wisdom.greatdetectives.net. But join us back here next week. We'll have another episode on Wednesday of The Man Called X. Coming up tomorrow, join us for Philo Vance, where... Well, Markham, it certainly seems strange being with you in the middle of the night when we haven't been working on a murder. Well, even district attorneys take some time off, Vance. And here's your apartment house. That it is. Well, thanks for taking Ellen home and for dropping me. No trouble at all, Vance. I'll call you tomorrow if anything interesting happens. I'll be waiting. Good night, Markham. Meet you at a murder. I beg your pardon, Mr. Vance? Yes, I'm Vance. I've been waiting here in front of your house for hours. Mr. Vance, I'm Edgar Walters. I, I must talk to you. It's, it's about my wife. She's missing. There's nothing I can do about that tonight. Not at this hour. But you've got to do something, Mr. Vance. I'm desperate. You know that gambling ship that's anchored offshore? Yes, I know about it. Why? Well, my wife went out there this evening to gamble with Lucky Saunders. He owns the ship. She can't help gambling. She she has to. Cards, roulette, horses. It doesn't make any difference. There are people like that. But as long as you know where she is, Mr. Walters... I know where she was, Vance. All gambling stops on board at 2 a.m., and it's almost four now. She should have been home an hour ago. I, I know something has happened to her. And you want me to find out what, if anything? You're a private investigator, Vance. And I'll pay you well. I'll go upstairs and change my clothes. Be on my way in half an hour. Here's my card, Vance. Call me as soon as you find out anything, will you? And thank you. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome, Mr. Walters. I only hope I give you a real reason for thanking me before long. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.